Well, the Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how y'all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today in Orshi East, we have actually have ourselves a new playmate. So Rang, tell us about the old one and the new one. Well, on the left-hand side in blue, re or red, I should say, God damn it, we have Grey Fox playing as uh, Polish Home Army, flatline income. Right-hand side, we have Light Rare playing Third American Armor Division, we have Vanguard income. So the Amiya Krakawa, uh, tell us a little, or I'm, I'm sure the polls in the audience are already kind of cringing, but tell us a little bit about those groups. What's what's the deal with them? Well, we haven't seen them in quite a while. I mean, it's a very interesting division, as it is a resistance fighter division. Lots of very cool infantry stuff, but very light in terms of tanks and anti-armor and actual proper equipment. So it should be pretty interesting. I mean, right at the start, we're seeing this mortar play dropping in some smoke into the central town and just rushing all of these well, I don't really know what all these sort of Russian or Polish infantry do, but they're pretty damn good for the most part as he really does have all sorts of equipment. Well, he is bringing the Podazanchi so I'm, I'm happy mm -hmm. he's bringing the party I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and the Ocho Nitsi, which sounds like a scratch <laughs> Uh, but Third Armored is getting overwhelmed. Their infantry is getting overwhelmed. Not too mm -hmm. surprising, but the real test is going to be as these tanks start to move in. Again, this 155 off map is already engaging. Ooh, wait a second. Sorry. Down south, we actually have a Scott, an M8, and a couple of engineers diving behind enemy lines here, already collecting quite a bit of territory. Yes, he, yes, he is. Yeah. And that, that was a pretty damn good push. I mean, going right through all of that uh, Polish infantry without getting blown up, that was pretty ballsy. But now being on the other side, he could provide a little bit of fire support from behind, but he probably need some infantry in there, some engineers, for example, to try and clear things out. We are seeing right now, unfortunately, the Polish uh, infantry here, such as it is, getting absolutely plastered by the 155, and all their earlier gains, I think, are pretty much getting given away. Mm-hmm. And That's it's depressing everything. Rather sad. He's got one of his mightiest anti-tank planes moving on in right now. The mighty <laughs> Tamon. It'll get yeah eventually, probably in the, by the next phase. Also, I love the fact that the Armada still technically has the insignia for the tank gun, because essentially what it is the the thirty-seven mil. Mm -hmm. Um, you click on it, you get a nice little tank turret. There. Oh yeah, yeah, one of those icon things. Oh, wait a second, we have actually another one coming to the south, too. I think he's looking for the Scott. Uh, but bizarrely enough, despite the fact that the Americans are behind enemy lines, they are not officially allowed to hold that territory. No, they're not. And we've got the 50 cows trying to shoot down the biplane. And not going to do much. Yeah. Succeeding easily. Scott goes mm -hmm. down in the south, just the same time the other Tamman goes down in the middle, but the P-51s can take him out lickety split and just like that he uh lickety splits <laughs> it down to the ground yeah and remind me the we whole what's the whole schwat thing uh it's just it's a it's a hatcher during the polish home army uh operating mm -hmm. they men to capture a hatcher and they, they called it schrot it was like a special weapons and tactics it was, uh, I don't know what it meant, but it was a pro rather special capture. There's a bunch of pictures of it. Same with other things that the Polish Home Army captured. I'm sorry, that, that was maybe a bit of a more of an American joke there for half a second. We have a, the police force called SWAT, so it's a special weapon to tactics. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, sorry. That <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not terribly funny if I had to explain it, but maybe maybe somewhere. Um, now, if you get a couple of them, you'd have a SWAT team. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm hoping for, that occasionally we do get to see a SWAT team. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see right now the P-51, I mean, the P-51 is, but it's, it's, it's almost an incredible just to watch this happen. Yeah. He, by himself, I feel like, can take out most of this Polish home army equipment. Just the, the air, aircraft is just so outclassed. Yeah, it's, it's such a bloody good aircraft. It's like, maneuverable, fast, pretty damn good firepower. What's, what's not to love? It's named after a, a horse. True. True, and an unbroken horse, too. Mm -hmm. With the power of 150 horses under your hood. <laughs> Lexus. Now being sold everywhere. <laughs> Interesting. Down to the south, 
somehow Gray Fox has been able to overrun Light Rare. While it doesn't mean that his his rear is cleared up, you can actually going to see one of these anti tank guns go down. I'm guessing within the next minute or so, we are going to see them probably clean up the American forces behind the front lines. Yeah, I mean we got those two half tracks here hiding out. I do like the armored rifles and the engineers, but yeah, we got the infantry going into that forest to try and clear things out. Same as like where I can't get that armored rifle a little bit north to maybe kill the short. And, and that's the thing I'm a little concerned about right now, so the shot itself is not really... Oh, he's moving. Yeah, he's fine. He's getting, he's getting past, yeah. it looks like. Alright. Yeah, Grey Fox is doing pretty well for, for Polish Home Army, really securing that southern side. Doing pretty good at north and in the central position as well. He really needs to treat, cut, uh, keep and try and keep a like foothold in these town fights, because if he gets into an open field fight against Third Armoured, it's, he'll probably it's, lose. It's over in two seconds at that point. Yeah. To be fair, he does have access to four whole German heavy tanks. Three Panthers and one Tiger. But it's, it's, you can't really rely on your entire force and only four heavy tanks. Your tank force it out. No, I don't need at least idea. five. Actually, I kind of like this. This, this kind of... It looked like he was going to drop two half-tracks in the middle of it. Two armor rifles. Looked like they were going to get completely shellacked by this ambush that was set up. Mm -hmm. Last second detour and you go up and around. I like it. It's it's such a like small that. modification. And then just completely put in the forest, yeah. So you're gonna reef out to get all pinned down and then maybe armored rifles and hook on in and get some easy surrenders. Oh well, why engage head on if you don't have to, you know? Exactly. Yeah, the central position Late rares men to get a bit of a foothold back into here now with the armored rifles. But this this cluster bomber biplane's been pretty on point. I mean he's got this second one trying to come in, trying to get some sort of eyes on, but never mind. It's definitely on point because it's gonna be staying on the plane forever, it's just now shot down. Well he's just living on a different plane of existence. <laughs> How have we never come up with that one? Of I have no idea, but I'm feeling very Jesus. philosophical tonight. <laughs> There's so much untapped potential for our puns still, Khan. After two years, I'm quite happy. Well, I mean, war has changed. We must also, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, now, kind of humorously, almost up to the north, I say humorously as people die consistently, the digital soldiers which just kind of dance to our merry tune of destruction. Not been quite as much action. We do have now this PTRD as the lone man on the front lines save a lot of fire to the north, but um, there hasn't been much action there, and I, and I can kind of guess why. It's much more confined, much more difficult for Third Armor to really play to their strengths. Yeah, it, Third Armor does have pretty damn good infantry because M1 Garrons, but you don't get a lot of them compared to infantry divisions, so you can't just. I mean, you can spam into a forest, but you can't do it for the entirety of the match. And really, you want to fight more on open ground, because that's where all your bloody half-tracks really come into play. Can I also just say, I love how the, the P-51 delivers its bombs. That that skip yep. bomb, I, I don't know why, but I just, I love when an attack craft does that. There's something so elegant. Mm -hmm. It's just so satisfying. It's just, it's like it, it's, it comes in quick, and... P-51 Ultra drop its bombs, it's still a really deadly fighter plane. Gains that extra agility. And he is trying to secure the skies here. Well, we're going to have an IL-2 slowly turning towards the south. Regrettably, though, uh, Bofors is going to engage him. And the IL-2 is very durable, but you don't want him to be engaged. No, you don't. Wait, wait, P-51 might go... Might, P-51 <laughs> goes down to burst of fire from an IL-2 scout? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I was lucky. Holy crap, he, uh, P-51 did kind of go into his gun sights, to be fair, but... Damn, what, what, what a cool aerial kill. Down to the last barrage, I believe, from that off after the 155 Sherman OP. Um, he's definitely dropping his OP barrage. Force about the mm -hmm. SWAT, and I think we're going to see the last squad of armored rifles being pushed in. Yep, yep and here's, here's, here's the, the pinch. Tracks. Here's the pinch. Now, 
here's a question. Light Rare is playing for an earlier knockout here. Does Gray mm -hmm. Fox gain anything by trying to play for, for time? Uh... You don't get a huge amount as the game goes on, to be honest. Riv... Riv pose. B phase is when you get the heavy tanks, and C phase is when some of the Soviet reinforcements come in, such as some T-34s, some T-70s, some, like, artillery. It's re it's really gonna come down to Grey Fox's infantry play more than anything. And maybe a little bit in terms of air power. I mean, he's got the U-2 coming in up north to try and class the M4A run. Do a barrel roll. It drops its bombs. There we go. It's just like it's it looks like a it looks like a huge carpet bomber and it drops its bombs. So it's just like a tiny little biplane. Well, let's say a carpet bomber because as as fast as it drops its bombs, it's going so slow that it's yeah practically an entire. I don't you know. Could I gotta wait, but yeah. you know what I'm talking no, about. No, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be feeling carpet of the floor. Uh, Get shot that by another one. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair, losing that plane to kill Sherman, it's... You kind of already paid yourself off. And we are seeing the one and only Tiger being brought into the center position. There he is. Tikris. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, the Tetris theme is playing in my head as the uh, up quarter... Cor cor I don't know. I, I see that and I thought thinking of Cobra Niki for a second. So now for everyone who's listening, <laughs> enjoy the thought of Tetris in, the, in your head for the rest of today. Yeah, I, I, will, I, will, I will give you credit. I mean, bloody Polar's names are pretty difficult to say. Except Especially for... with all these weird, weird ones like Partizanskis, Obstrodzis, Mozidon. I'm not going to shut up now. I'm probably embarrassing myself. Well, you know what? There, there was one easy Polish name. It was a, uh, an older woman I worked with back in uni. Her name was Maria. I got that Polish oh. name pretty well. That's pretty simple. I think I could talk with her. <laughs> it was rare. It took me a while to get it. Only because she didn't tell me her name, although she was just that lady. Uh, but, <laughs> actually, I'm trying to think what the Obkor Kharashawchi bring. I don't recall what they bring into the fight. It's a, You're right. We don't see these guys very often, so I'm, I'm no. kind of fascinated because I'm trying to just relearn them as we go along here. Yeah. They got, one thing I really do like about Polish Home Army is it's a variety of stuff that they sure. get. They got Polish anti-tank guns. They got Soviet air power, German tanks. It's got a little bit of everything, and even just the infantry, it's bizarre equipment choices. I mean, the upper Jukowskis have got boat action, right? They got semi-automatic boat action rifles with the uh, Man Lake 95. They got M1 carbines. They got the Czech machine. They got a goddamn mansion. It's just all, it's all over the place with their guns. Is what I'm trying to say. Many words. That's fair. I mean, we're going to have this OP Sherman coming in to get some eyes on the Schwat, and he went, goes down almost immediately. But that's that's why he's there. I mean, it's great to have the machine gun, but Third Armor doesn't need it. Yeah. And that Hatcher is a real good challenger to kill his regular challenge. So just watching as the IL-2s get engaged here by that P-51 again. Um, Tiger, in the meantime, uh, congratulations, my friend. You're going to kill... A uh, uh, half track. Whoop the freaking do. <laughs> uh, but where is he moving off to? Anywhere in particular? The answer is no. And actually, I'm a little bit nervous about him because the 76 mil is moving up. Very nervous. Yes, it is. We've got a mortar half track being brought in down south, which is a fantastic call. That got goddamn mortar half tracks, some of the best artillery units in game. And in a forest fight like this. You can pretty easily clear out what's left of the infantry and stun up that shot. Unless, of course, he's able to get eyes on. Mm hmm. Which she's not going to, never mind. Nope. But yeah, late rare, doing pretty good now, getting a 13 11. He might well, kind of probably go back. No, 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 he's still going to keep control of that flag in the center. But he almost has that central hill completely under his control. And usually, once you do that, you, you kind of win the match. But, I mean, that's going to be a consistent thing no matter which way you, you kind of look at it, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. Owning the center ground between two uh, forces is a huge, huge, I'd say, bonus. And then, again, another of those moments where you, I'm looking, I was just distracted by down south as another different kind of Polish infantry being brought on in the, the Berlin Kolchki, or Berlin Gauschki. Um, yeah. I can only assume it's the Berlin troops. 
Of um, course, they came straight from Berlin to exactly. fight the Germans for the Poles. Oh, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's like the Volksdeutsche, except the Poldeutsche. Mm. Or the, the, the Volkspolia, <laughs> I don't know. To um, fight the Americans in this case, really, which is an extremely bizarre matchup. Well, at the Cold War, man, it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but heating things up, actually, a couple of flamethrower troops being brought into the north, the central side. A couple of Shermans down south to kind of really punch through, and this is going to be, I feel like, the beginning of the end for Grey Fox. Yeah, this is... The American armor is starting to ramp up, even though, you know, the income raise isn't looking too great for them as the match continues. But you got so many bloody Shermans for third armored. I mean, it's... I mean, his American Armor Division is going to be Sherman spam, that shouldn't be a surprise. But against a division that doesn't have great anti-tank, your Shermans are a bloody nightmare. Yes, they are. And even the Scots coming in, the 75 mil howitzer, is just going to be not even a godsend per se, but it's just enough firepower to be really, really devastating. Yeah. I believe yeah, the Tiger got killed it seems, which is you can't can't really afford to be losing the Tiger like that. Well I think it was a seventy six mil. Um I'm just yeah. actually watching down south as the mortar half track really starts pounding the middle of nowhere for some reason. And then maybe he's gonna start engaging this this anti tank gun. I do like how our engineer sleeper agent has activated and gonna be sneaking up on the anti tank gun, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The Mortar Haptor doesn't need to engage that anymore, so he would hopefully not attack his own troops. I'm just watching as these Berlin Gauchki, I doubt, Berlin troops, um, <laughs> are slowly going to get overwhelmed, especially as these mm -hmm. two Shermans come on in. The BTRDs are really quite good, I guess, under the circumstances, especially with you know, the tanks being quite close. But there's still so much firepower on those things that, I mean, good freaking luck. Yeah. Once again, that Mortar half track hitting nothing. I think he's trying to kill the anti-tank gun, but it, it's been dead for a little bit. Well, even then, we also have these, these M2 half-tracks moving on through, and flamethrower troops, yep, finally diving out um, just in the center. I thought they'd be behind enemy LUDs, maybe to kind of break that open? Not really for sure. But it does look like the Shermans will clean this up in the south, and when that happens, they have, what, the, the Ocho? to worry about and that's about it yeah and once you get into the southern plains it's perfect fighting fields for the third armor division and heck maybe our m3 hull track will finally be saved <laughs> he has been chilling behind enemy lines for a while hasn't he mm -hmm. saving private burger i was thinking more like owen wilson's like you know behind enemy lines but it's definitely true oh yeah wow <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you gotta be really super concerned here because if you lose these two these two flags, that's a, going to be a nineteen five, yeah. and that's going to be a, a sucker punch right there. Um, not sure just what went down. I think it was that maybe one of the P fifty ones. I don't know. Uh, I think IL two making a run towards this. Oh, okay, good, good idea. I thought he was gonna make a run towards the anti aircraft gun. I was like, dude, no, life life is worth it. Don't kill yourself. Yeah, the P fifty one is gonna come in. It's an IL-2, it's going to take more than one gun run to kill out bugger. Well, there's so many IL-2s IL moving in trying to get after the P-51. Nope. Good luck, Too my fast. friend. Too furious. <laughs> yeah, that's another sleeper one right there. That was good. That was Thank good. you. Um, and with that, the Ocho goes down south, and that's now 17-7. Yep, back to the 17-7. And I'm looking to see... We have an engineer squad in the center that I think is going to get outflanked pretty quickly. And the P-51, in the meantime, apparently is just way too fast for this engagement. There's no there's no slowdown. There's ludicrous speed no. and there's landing. He's got uh, a need for speed. Yeah, he, he certainly does. But uh, I think here, just right now, he's putting himself into the danger zone. <laughs> and I still can't believe the Top Gun 2 <laughs> is a thing. How? I How know, is that a thing? Know. Hollywood likes money. I like money too. I'm still not going to be quite that on original. Uh, Hollywood has low standards. <laughs> not going to dispute that. Um, yeah. Bofors, in the meantime, I'm going to force back this IL 2, and I think that's going to be a gift wrap over here for this head to head P 51, making one more gun run head to head. Come on, you can do it, Mustang. No, you can't do it, Mustang. Oh my gosh, Mustang Sally, you better slow your Mustang down. Yeah, just, just take it down 100 kilometers or so. 
Exactly. Still be fast and you still be the fastest thing in the sky. Don't worry. Exactly. I mean, jeez, again, what six eighty? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Chill the f out. Nah, he just leaves. Good. No. He's like, you know what? It's too hard. I'm just. Gonna, I'm out. I've done my job. I do like how Grey Fox he is trying to put some pressure still onto that hill. He's got a lot of sliver of the hill under his control, but the Shermans have a really nice gun line set up. And of knowing to tank, can't really do too much. Well, and the funny thing is, I feel like if he was able to bring these Sabotage... Um, Sabotage... Whatever, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> With the Panzer Shreks. Yeah. The Panzer Shreks. We're going to see one of them go down here. And there goes a Sherman. Perfect kill. But when you have the party and you have um, the Obes over here... Unfortunately, you just don't have the range on your anti-tank. You have anti-tank grenades, which are a little better than me throwing rock at somebody. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that range consistently. It's just it, it's not powerful enough. Just it's just it's unfortunately not powerful enough. But um, 195, the Americans control the South, um, and and I don't think the South is going to rise again. At any point soon, and in no, the north, no. actually, we're seeing a bit of that big horn start going into the northern side. So, you know, you give the third armored even a nibble, and they're gonna gulp down the whole freaking map. Yeah, do you want to take us to time steer at like twenty one fifty? The sure thing, sir. And two, one, and times two. And uh, that's that's kind of pretty much the feels of the tail of the tape, my friends. Um, mm -hmm. As the Americans are just going to continue to pound over and over onto these poor poles. Yeah, I think this is it's a pretty good reason we don't see Polish home army a lot, and it is because they have a real hard time against. Well, they have a real hard time in general. They got really cool infantry and some other cool fun units, but you just lack the real anti armor to deal with. A tank division such as this. Uh, and, and it's... I'm not saying they're like a D tier division, but it's just it's one of those things that they... They were definitely put in for flavor. And I really appreciate the yeah. attempt to be historically representative. But, yeah, yeah. It's, you, you can't play with them easily. Yeah, it, it is a core division. I do like having... I mean, how many games like to play as a Polo's home army? It's... It's not a lot, especially in an RTS game of all things. True. So it is cool for the historical flavor, but it is flavor. They're not, they're not, they're not good in game, unfortunately. Well, I guess it's historically accurate, to be honest. Well, we have actually we have a couple of these uh, biplanes taking out two Shermans. One took out two Shermans. It definitely paid for himself. Mm -hmm. Um, IL twos. I mean, the poles that are making kills are trading decently effectively. They're not perfect, but they're decent. Yeah. And losses here... Not Nothing. a whole lot to write home about. I think it was just better no. trading. Yeah. Only a 500 like point difference, which is pretty damn good. And by the way, yes, the 76 mil took out the the Tiger. So not, not shocking there. No. Um, but with that in mind, I, I think that about does it for this particular replay. Any final thoughts? Ah, uh, not... Not a... Okay, well, folks, remember to always dip your waitresses. Until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.